What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing today, ladies? Hey, it's a good day. Good to see you guys again. Excited today. Excited. Absolutely. And welcome back, Julie. We, we miss you this week. Yes. I, know, I don't know where I've been, but... You guys have been taking breaks from us. She's been taking breaks from us. Don't tell. <laughs> I missed you guys. It's, I would not have missed this one for the world, though. So excited about today. Yes, yes. We have a huge guest today and a personal wingman of mine. Uh, we were stationed together at Keesler Air Force Base in my last assignment. Uh, I'll tell you something. Don't invite her to your house if you have a glass ceiling because she's busting <laughs> all through that damn thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh so for my, what I've witnessed over the years of knowing her, uh, man, she is everything we need in a leader. And I'm glad you all will get the chance to get to know her a little bit today. Uh, Julie, without further ado, please introduce today's guest. Y'all, I could legit not sleep last night because of today's guest. Like, I know I've said that before, but like this one, I'm, I'm just so excited. It is such an honor to have her with us today. She is the first woman to serve as the highest ranking non-commissioned officer in any of the military services. She is also the first Asian American to be the Air Force's top enlisted leader. In her current role, she's the personal advisor to the Chief of Staff and the Secretary of the Air Force on all issues regarding the welfare, readiness, morale, and proper utilization of and progress of the enlisted force. Please help us welcome the 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Joanne Bass. Hey, 19. Ooh, ooh. 19. It is, thank, thank you all so much. Julie Lee, a pleasure to meet you. Me yes, ma'am. My wingman and friend, KO. Um, it's always good to be around you. You just always have good vibes that make people feel good. What you didn't share, what I thought you were going to share was when we lived at, in Keesler Air Force Base, a lot of our houses where we call it Chief's Row all look the same. And apparently, <laughs> There was a get together a few months ago at somebody's house and um, I actually went into somebody else's house full on, <laughs> full on went into their kitchen and I was like, hello, like where's the party and, and realized I was in, who leaves their door unlocked? So I was literally in the med group chief's house when I was supposed to be somewhere else and, and realized, thank you, Lord, they didn't have a dog. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Hey, I, listen, I, I just did my little mini intro. I was going to get to all the, the juicy oh, stuff later good. on. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Bass, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. We truly appreciate it. It's such an honor. And just want to tell everybody a couple housekeeping things. So thanks for joining us. We appreciate you guys for tuning in um, and being faithful to Chief Chat. So drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions or comments that you want to leave for Chief Bass, let us know because we'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party and enjoy this interview with your friends and then follow us so you know who's coming up on next on Chief Chat. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Bass, and it and it is Bass, just in case y'all were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> it was never Don't about get... the name KO. That is still too early for that. Uh, it's but it it's was too never... soon. I know it's too soon. It's too, it's never too soon. Never about the name. But yes, listen, that sounds so good, man. That title sounds so good, man. Team nineteen in the house. We appreciate you for uh for showing us some love. The exchange is super grateful for this amazing opportunity to chat with you. And, and, uh, and it means so much to all our viewers out in, in uh, Facebook land. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Listen, it was a no brainer to me, honestly, again, one, because I get to hang out with you. Um, but two, I have been an AFES fan for a long time. And when you think about AFES has, has been serving uh, service members and families for over 125 years, how, how could I not get on, you know, you know, your military when you get excited, when you see the AFI sign on a base. And so <laughs> there, there's no, I, I couldn't, I will say that, you know, it, it, when I posted it on my social media that I was doing a chief chat, everybody thought it was my chief chat and I was <laughs> going to chat with P. Diddy and The Rock. 
which is actually kind of cool to me, but it, but it's not. So I'm glad that we're on your chief chat yes, yes. and um, you have, you have some cool stuff going on. And I love the way AFIS is trying to just meet service members where they are and just um, be relevant for today. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, can you tell us where you called us from today and how you've been faring during the pandemic? Absolutely. So I'm here at Andrews, Joint Base Andrews right now. I just got off the road from a quick trip. So my team thought that it would be nice that I could telework today instead of coming to the Pentagon. However, um, there's no relaxing. I'm at home. This is probably my third or fourth engagement um, talking to folks. And then I've got, I think, three more after this. Uh, life is good, but like every single one of our service members, it's also tough right now. We never expected 2020 to turn out the way it has. I've got a 14 year old right now who's doing virtual uh, classes. She's a freshman in high school here. She's never met a teacher here. She's never met a friend here. And so just like our service members, we're going through the same stressors and it's tough. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all find the silver lining and the silver lining might be that we figured out ways how to connect with each other and, and and where we would never probably have Zoomed or done other ways of virtual connection or FaceTime, you know, before the pandemic, I didn't FaceTime with anybody unless you were an immediate family member. Absolutely. And now <laughs> I'm in pajamas, FaceTime and anybody. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine going to school uh, virtually in, in high school because I had a, you know, my oldest is 21 and he went through and, and as soon as he got to high school, I was like, he started showing me that homework. I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to listen to that teacher, brother. He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't help you. Same, same here. So for our viewers who may not know, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself in your Air Force career? How long have you been serving and what does your current role entail? Absolutely. So I'm the daughter of, a, um, of an Army officer who, who served. I came in the Air Force. I've been in for 27 years. And originally, I just joined, honestly, to just do four years. I thought I would do four years, get my GI Bill, and figure out what I wanted to do in life. And, and somehow, 27 and a half years later, I'm still <laughs> serving. I have came in as an aviation resource manager, so I'm an ops person. I've spent the majority of my career doing that. I've spent a whole lot of time in uh, Air Force Special Operations and Joint Special Operations. I'm married to an Army guy. We've been married <laughs> for quite a while. Um, he retired three years ago, and he's living his best life on that golf course, KO. You oh, know. yeah, I know. At Keesler, he was on the golf course. Uh, religious all the time yes um, <laughs> we, we have two kiddos we have a college age kid and then another daughter and you know we're just living our best life enjoying enjoying things here fantastic and you're about two months into your new position so can you tell us what has it been like assuming such a high profile role during this uh oh did we lose Leah did we lose Oh, we might have. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Okay. Okay. So I think she was just, she was just asking high profile role, challenging time. Yeah. How's it going? You, need um, time. you know, it's, it's going great. I've been in the seat um, going on nine weeks. I have a fantastic team around me. We call ourselves team 19, eight, eight folks that are all there supporting and working for our airmen. I don't know that anything quite prepares you for a job like this, except for what I do tell people is that every job that you have does prepare you for that next level to some degree. So oftentimes we don't know why we're going through the challenges we are in the character building, but it really does set you up for that. And so looking back um, now, I look at every single job that I had and it helped give me the experience and the perspective that I need to sit in this position. It's amazing also because I have fantastic leaders all around me from the secretary of the Air Force to my boss and wingman, General CQ Brown, to my teammates across the services, CZ, who's a good friend of mine, uh, our SEAC number four and, and um, all the other sister service SELs to my teammates in all the ma major commands. And then of course, you know, our airmen. 
I feel like they are all part of Team 19 because where we've got to get to for the United States Air Force in the future, we'll take a whole of Air Force approach and we need everybody on board to get after it. So, you know, when we when we uh, gave you the introduction, we told we told the world you're the first of, you know, first female to, to be of any military service, you know, the first uh, Asian American uh, to be over the Air Force in, uh, enlisted wise. Uh, what did how did that what does that feel like like what I know that's a lot to kind of take in and a lot to be like man I'm the first to do that so I just yeah. kind of want to know how you know when you really sat back and all the the the, the F-16s start flying over and all these parades and stuff like like yeah. what does that feel like to, to know that you are the first all right this is real talk right real, real talk real, talk, real, real. talk. <laughs> yeah it feels the same, you know, <laughs> you know, you know people, people always ask and they're like, hey, what's it feel like to, to be this or that? And I'm like, the same, you know, because yeah. fundamentally we're still the same people now, now I, but it's not lost on me. What a huge honor and, and how humbled, you know, myself and my family are to, to be in this position but as a leader in our Air Force, I've been serving airmen just like UKO for years. And I really consider it service. You know, when I look at the, the leadership triangle, I look at it inverted where instead of myself and General Brown and the secretary being at the top, it's inverted where we work for our airmen and their families. And so to that respect, it's the same. It's an honor to be um, again, the 19th Chief Master in the Air Force, and certainly it's not lost on me that I'm also the first female and the first Asian American, but my goal would be that we would quit having first, that we would quit having seconds, and we just simply recognize people for who they are yeah. and what they bring to the fight. And, and, and so if I had to be the first to help um, create that, that culture, then I will take that on. Well, just know you got a lot of folks that uh, that that you've inspired by by being the first, and a lot of folks being looking up and saying, you know what, I can I can do that. Like uh, I know when you know when we look in the the PDG or the Airman's Manual before, you know we all had had men, and 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 not to say you know not to take anything away from it, the leaders that we had, but I'm sure there were females looking in there like, man, I don't see any females in here. Like that, it's it's noticeable. So. Uh, man, thank you. It's awesome. It's awesome that, uh, yeah. that that we were the first service. But just to think about across the Army, Navy, yeah. Air Force, man, that's crazy. That's crazy <laughs> to even fathom to think that we're 2020 and this is the first. I, I did have sister services reaching out to me, too, to say, dang, we want to be the first. And so, um, <laughs> so I get that. But, you know, the other thing I'll tell you that keeps you humble is your family. Oh, yeah. You know, I, my they, rem they remind you real quick. Oh, they do. Like my kids, <laughs> when, I, when I go out to speak, you know, and, and I might go out to my daughter's high school or whatever, and she's like, you're coming to speak? Like, why? You know, so again, ki family keeps you humble. Yeah, no, when, when I said I was interviewing these folks, my kids like, you interviewing somebody? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know, tell me about I know. it. But one thing that you have been consistent in saying with us uh, or talking about this morning is the importance of team. I think you've said team like every other word. That is, that's incredible. And that must speak to your leadership priorities um, in some way. So can you talk about your priorities and goals in your role? And then have you had to modify your Absolutely. leadership style during the pandemic at all? Absolutely. So the focus areas that, that I worked with my team on and, and what we want to really get after is people, readiness, and culture. And they fall, those focus areas fall neatly underneath our Air Force's strategic priorities. But it's something, you know, I, I like to operate in threes. It's something that our airmen and their families can understand. And most of the stuff that matters to them are, are those things. Everything that falls in the people block, everything that falls in readiness. Why do we have to you know, maintain the readiness that we need in, in the world's Air Force? And then why do we you know, have to have the culture that we need to get after? So those are the things I'm focused on. In the pandemic, has it changed the way that we operate? I, certainly. 
it, it's challenging us because we're not able to, you know, have boots on the ground at times to spend more time with our folks, but it's causing us to be flexible and again, learning how to do things virtually. So I don't think that it's put us behind it at all. We're just delivering our messages as leaders and as teammates differently. Yeah. And so to kind of add to that, um, I'm super impressed. I mean, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by all the different uh, ven uh, medians of, of, of professional development. So you got your quarantine university, you got us mentoring us, you got uh, NCOPD Live, you got all these different things that are really giving us really good information, even though we can't, or, or local top threes, AFSA, all these different, uh, they're utilizing social media to really give us some really good knowledge. Because I didn't get that coming up. Like, I didn't get the strategic message uh, as a tech sergeant or math sergeant, uh, like I can now, uh, Absolutely. because I was, I had my head down, you know, doing what I do and, and what, what I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing. So to yeah. be able to, yeah. to sit back and have all these leaders jump on these meetings and, and give us some great, uh, information and, and yeah. give a strategic level, be like, this is the why, because I never understood the why coming up. They just say, they say, go here. And I just, I just go and I just do this. And so, uh, I've been super impressed, especially during the pandemic, because it just it, they really kicked it in the high gear during the pandemic and, and giving us great information. People uh, in front of cameras all the time uh, talking to us about good stuff. So I agree. And, and to your point, we can learn something from everybody. Absolutely. You know, there's e even when when I look at your show and the guests that you have on your show, you can always learn something. And, and so that's the goodness about this venue. If the, if somebody's on and, and you don't quite care for it, then you can just flip a channel and, and go Absolutely. somewhere else. But if they yes, have something to offer, we have really a menu of here's all the different things that are available. What I would ask our service members and their families is if you're going to spend time on social media, spend time on your devices, do it for good. Yeah. There's a great, there's a great, yes. there's a great, there's a great um, show out there, a documentary called um, The Social Dilemma on Netflix. Ooh, I'm probably not supposed to endorse. So if I'm not, y'all can do it. But I just watched it recently this week at, at the advice of a teammate that I have. Who, and it is really powerful, especially if you're a parent. You need to watch it because social media has really, and devices and accessibility to information has really changed who we are as people, as a culture, and we have to be ready for those impacts. It, it, it's powerful to know that because one of the key points that I got out of that was while we might be in the information age, we're also really in the misinformation age. Absolutely. We've, yes, got to guard, we've got to guard our hearts and minds. Yeah, everybody wants to be first, right? Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be first to say, tell a story. I can even think in, in my group text with my friends, like if, if something happened in football, I want to be the first one to, and, and, and but sometimes it ain't even, even right. So yeah, you're right. Let's, let's be accurate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Good stuff. Chief Bass, you have mentioned already, you grew up in an army family. So what was that like? And then how did your family service inspire you and your career? It was great. You know, what, being able to be a military brat, like most of our military children, I grew up to seeing diversity already because that, that's what you see in a military community. So I went to primarily Dodd schools where I was um, around people of all varying degrees of races, creeds, and kinds. And so I think it made me a more open and well-rounded person. Also being part of a military family and, and having my dad serving, I mean, there was discipline and structure oh, yeah. in, in our house. <laughs> so we, we won't even go further, but there was discipline and structure. And I've learned that structure is a good thing in, in, yes, in, um, in raising folks. Um, so, so it was great. It also afforded me opportunities where I don't know if y'all know, but AFES was my first job. Oh man! Was, what? Again, be, being being an army brat, and you know, my dad was really old school. Like I had to beg to get five dollars. It's not like how it is today, where your kids go and grab twenty dollars out out of your purse. But <laughs> I had to beg for money. So at fifteen years old, the only place I could get a job in Wiesbaden, Germany, was at the Afi's Pizza Place. 
So I worked, I worked at the pizza place for AFES and then, and then I got promoted. I went to the hot dog stand in the main PX area. (laughs) (laughs) Then I think I went to the burger bar. And then finally I couldn't wait for a retail job. So somehow I ended up in the PX, you know, working, working there. Um, So my first job was AFES and you guys taught me a ton. Let me tell you, I'll never forget being a 15, 16 year old and having to, we didn't have CBTs back then, but we had the training videos. So I had to watch, Mm. and I had to watch a training videos on the customer is always right. So that has always, I don't know if they still teach that, but that has always stayed with me. Customer is always right. Okay, got it. But anyway, yeah, AFIS was my first job. Yeah, well, that's so cool. From the folks that I, I talk to around here, man, those folks that you work with are probably still working for us because they, they don't leave AP. <laughs> like, like, they're here forever. I was like, man, everybody here is like, I've been here for 30 years. I've been here for 40 years. I've been here for they're 50 probably, years. Probably, so, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great organization, though. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, switching gears a little bit, for those people that don't know, you're, you sit on the exchanges board of directors. You are a member of the board of directors. And so uh, a lot of people, and, and the thing I probably didn't know even coming in that the exchange is part of the Department of Defense. It's, we're not contractors, we're not private retailer. Everything we do is to benefit the member and the service members and their family. And so there's no profit, nobody's you know, taking money, uh, you know, trying to make as much money as we can so we can go tin our windows or buy some rims or whatever, we, we're, we're not doing it. And like you said, we. You already kind of stole my thunder. We we just celebrated our 125th year uh, anniversary of, of AFES. So uh, mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what your role is on the board uh, so people can understand? So, so I've only, in fairness, been on one AFES board meeting. And I'll tell you, it, it is nothing, nothing I've done in the military has prepared me for all the boards that I sit on as, as a chief master in the Air Force, along with the Sergeant Major of the Army and, and so on and so forth. We do a lot of talking about dividends and, and, and stuff like that. Again, this is stuff that chiefs don't talk about. You know, what are we right. going to do with this $2 million dividend? What I will tell everybody is, you know, we sit on that board and everything is done in good order and, and decency on how do we run an operation like this that supports our, fa- our, our service members and our families. And most importantly, for the, for the dividends that do come back, the money that comes back, how do we allocate that money back to our military communities? So there is a whole lot of um, discussion and voting and, and very strategic level stuff on how to continue to s- support the AFI's mission and keep it relevant and operational for years and years to come. Yes, you are, you are advocating for every person sitting out here watching this thing right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, yeah. We are, but, but the boards are not talking, talking tactical level stuff like, you know, what's not in the, on the AFI shelf, you know, that again, you know, ju- just yeah. like sitting where we are, we're, we're talking about how do we sustain um, um, this company that does so much for our military so that it remains relevant and viable again for the future. So, ma'am, well, we you do care what's on the shelves. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you had mentioned how the exchange was there for you growing up as your first job in Germany, giving you some spending money, teaching you, you know everything you learn at your first job. Can you think about another time that maybe the exchange was there for you while you were serving in uniform? And then why does the support of APHIS matter? I, you know, I can. I, I've had the privilege of spending quite a bit of time overseas. I had two tours in Germany where, mm-hmm. where I've had an opportunity. And the one thing, again, I feel like APHIS is like good old faithful. You know, when, whenever you're overseas somewhere and you want a sense of connection to home, that's AFIs. I mean, I, I don't know if the, the younger generation calls it that, but we used to call it doing a shelf check. And so I used to love going to whatever AFIs, you know, shop at or, or BX or PX, wherever I was going to just do a shelf check to see what do they have over here. And then more importantly, <laughs> They're downrange. So all of the times that I deployed downrange, again, seeing that AFI sign and knowing that we had somebody there. And let me tell you about AFI's employees too. 
when I was a young airman, I might have been an A1C or, or seen, yeah, I think I was an A1C, de deployed downrange over the holidays. We were, you, we actually got invited to the AFES employees' houses for Thanksgiving. And I'll never forget one of the cashiers at the shop at invited me and a bunch of my friends to her house while we were deployed downrange to fix us some turkey and some food. And so that was, again, young 19, 20 year old um, airman at the time for an AFES worker to just, you know, open up their home and pour into us outside of her duties. That was, that was life changing. Yeah, that leaves an impression Amazing. for my family. Absolutely. So it's been quite a year so far. Uh, you know, 2020 has been 2020. Uh, and, 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 and I know recently we, we pushed the, the PT test back to 2021. Uh, so, but we still got to stay in shape. We still got to be fit. We can't be bringing that COVID weight, uh, carrying that over into 2021. So how are you staying in shape? Can you give us some tips? I can't, let me tell you, um, to, to your point, you know, keeping a routine. I think that while we're in COVID, one of the best things that we can do is continue a routine that you've always done. And so I do my best to get my PT on about 4.30 or 5 in the morning. And let me tell you, I'm not a After morning you post person. too, because you post about 4.30 in the morning too. I <laughs> am not a morning person. So it takes, I feel like I need a decoration or award for that because it takes a lot of grit <laughs> For me to not hit snooze because I do love sleep but but I get my PT on in the morning if I don't I try to do my best to make sure I get in the afternoon but that I do it in the morning because you won't get it done in the afternoon after you've had a long day and so so I, I do PT in the morning I try to watch what I eat and of course you know I have to hold myself accountable if there are you know close to 600 close to six to seven hundred thousand airmen that we expect to hold hold themselves accountable from a fitness level, then I have to start and I have to lead from where I sit. And I do that again, but I do think KO fitness and readiness and, and who we are is more than just PT. Again, I think that's the mental resiliency that we've got to have, the physical resiliency, the social piece and the spiritual piece. And it's all of that that makes a strong fit person. Absolutely. Those calf, those calf pillars. Absolutely. And, and one other calf pillar. So this isn't a calf pillar, but if I could change it to be one, fiscal fitness, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is that every service member, every airman leaves out of our Air Force fiscally fit, you know, that yeah. they've saved money, that they are financially prepared to be okay. It breaks my heart when we have service members who aren't fiscally ready and, and aren't necessarily ready for the next chapter. Yeah, that, that, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I had a, um, a civilian that I worked with when I was an E-5 because I came from the Marine Corps and I transitioned to the Air Force and my first duty station in the Air Force, uh, we had a civilian and uh, she showed me her TSP. I don't know why she showed it to me, but I, I had no idea about TSP and I wasn't really saving money. I was kind of living paycheck to paycheck. And she showed me her TSP. She had thirty thousand dollars in there. I was like, damn, she got thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> so as as a young, as a young 23-year-old, I was like, man, I want thirty thousand dollars too. She's like, listen, uh, go on your TSP, you uh, allocate this amount of money, and over the years it'll just build up. And she started telling me about you know compound interest. And so at that moment, I think I was 23. Who was that? Who taught you that? Anna Kramer. I don't know if she's listening. She's on Anna my Facebook. Anna Kramer. If I yes. could give you a coin, I would. Because I love that she was a supervisor who shared that. Yeah. So she showed me that. And then so I, at that point, I've only I've had 15% of my paycheck going into TSP since. So uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am now, but it's it's a little bit more than 30,000. So I, I look I at it. it. I'm like, damn. Every time. <laughs> 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 You are so crazy. I know, but we all have to do that. And, and so that's that intrusive leadership that we have to have, not because we're being nosy as leaders, but because we care about our airmen, we want to see them fiscally fit and, and, and ready for that next thing. So I do that all the time. Let me tell you, my, my teenagers, 
are so embarrassed sometimes because if I see an airman walking or need a ride, like I will pull over, you know, and my kids are like, can you mom, can you quit at, you know, doing that? And then if I have them in my car for five or 10 minutes, oh, we get to the money like quick. I'm like, are y'all yeah. saving money? What, how much are you saving? You know, they, we've got to teach them, you know, $50, $100. And that compound interest is powerful because by the time you get out, you've saved money. Absolutely. I love that. Good, yeah. good on her. <laughs> Great advice. Great advice. So ma'am, eating well goes hand in hand with fitness. So can you share what nutrition looks like for you? And then what advice do you have for the force on eating well? All right. So I eating, drinking, what you drink, especially what I learned early on in my career is I, I probably drank a lot of calories. Um, you don't realize it. Now I didn't drink a lot of alcohol, but man, I love a white sugary drinks. Mocha. Yes. Mm -hmm. I used to love a white chocolate mocha. And then after senior NCO Academy and I gained 10 pounds off of a white chocolate mochas, I realized they don't love me. So I had to <laughs> find out. So I literally went to Starbucks and said, show me all the drinks that have, you know, less calories. And I had to, you have to kind of grow your taste buds to appreciate things that aren't really yes, sweet. Um, and I do think, you know, as time has gone on, we, we, my family values nutrition and, and we've changed, right? When, when you're younger, for me, when I was a young airman, I loved a grape Welch's soda and, and a, <laughs> and a, and a thing of Oreos that yeah. when I went to the flight duty desk, I grabbed Oreos and a Welch's. That, that was my snack of choice. Like I could never do that right now. Now, now it's all about what do I drink? And I drink a ton of water. Y'all know I love my coffee. So, so I do still do coffee, but I don't add sugar to it at all. I've trained my taste buds to just add, add some cream and, and enjoy that. I do dairy free most of the time when I can. If they have gluten free options, I try to do that. And I try my best to eat whole nutritious foods one thing that i wish we would do in america is is probably take note from some of the other countries where everything in other countries is organic for the most part you know it, mm -hmm. and it's not as expensive it just blows my mind how when we want to have organic and be healthier it tends to be more expensive but you know. we, we actually you know spend quite a bit on our groceries because we do our best to do that um but again and, and then water i i read somewhere recently well, not recently, but a few years back on how the best thing you can do for your body as soon as you wake up is drink a cup of, a cup of water because mm -hmm. it gets your organs going. So I drink water in my Kansas City. Oh, there you go. I, I knew it was coming. I you know, know, it was coming. You know and, and, and that's the first thing <laughs> when, when our family wakes up, we're like, did you have your water? And then we do what we do. Listen, if you go to the Chief Master Art in the Air Force's house for any type of a football game, she's going to have you eating out of Kansas City plates, Kansas City spoons, Kansas City cups. <laughs> I'm like, stop it, stop it. And we were fans <laughs> before they became cool, so. Yeah, no, it's a lot there of it's know. a lot of new Kansas City Chief fans out in the world. I can tell you that. I know. <laughs> so you you touched on um, you know, probably one of the more important parts is mentally fit and being resilient. Um, and, and so and you know, 2020 has really just been really tough on a lot of people. Uh, from, you know, people not being able to work. I got family that can't work. My kids ain't going to school that I got to find out, figure out daycare. I know it, uh, Derek Kiesler, we were, when, when COVID kind of, we kind of like, okay, COVID's a real thing. Mm -hmm. We shut down a whole bunch of stuff and, and airmen were like, man, I don't know what to do and how to do this. And, and we, we as leaders didn't really know either because we had never experienced that. Yeah. So um, just kind of touch on the, how, how you how you've been resilient during these times and how you kind of try to maintain your men, mental fitness I think um, I, I've done that KO for myself by connecting with others I think if you don't have other people to connect to to talk to to relate to and, and you are only in your own mind that would be extremely tough so for me, I have really leaned heavily on my social pillar more than everything. And I don't have, you know, a ton of close friends. I keep my tribe pretty tight, but again, routines, I think routines are important. And so for me, every Saturday, 
I, I, I call a teammate of mine who is downrange and, and we have coffee time together by ourselves. And then I call a couple of my closest teammates that we were stationed together and, and we're like sisters. And so Saturday morning, I kind of rejuvenate and, and fill that cup. The other piece of that is I think it's personally drawn our family in, in this house together more because more than ever, we actually, we're actually home because we're not trying to go out there. And so we spend a lot of time at home. And if we're home, then we really have to, all, we had to kind of redefine what that meant too, because home can be sometimes that you don't even talk to each other. And, and, and I hear that from people, but we've had to, we've had to say, no, you know, we've got to fortify our household and make sure that we are strong. So, so we huddle again, for, you know, we've always huddled for dinner, but when we have dinner, we don't, we don't have our devices with us. It is like a device free zone where we can actually look at each other eyeball to eyeball and have dinner together and talk. We also have a tradition where we do our highs and lows at, at dinner time. And so we'll share the high point of our day and our low point of our day. And you can always tell, you know, life isn't always peachy, you know, um, green here in the bass house. Cause if the kiddos are having a bad day because of me or their dad, cause structure, then mm -hmm. we're always their low. <laughs> my low. My low is, you know, <laughs> my, my mom and dad, you know, but, but anyway, you know, we, we, those are the things I think that have kept me resilient. I will tell you um, that it's not lost on us. This is a very stressful time. In fact, my, my boss had um, a, a, a meeting with all of his MAGCOM commanders where we were talking about our airmen and their families and the stressors that they're experiencing right now. And we realize that more than anything, you know, we were... You know, we have stressors already pre-COVID. Now we're in a pandemic and we have those stressors that, that are associated with that. We have racial disparities outside of our fence line. We have some racial disparities within our fence line because we come from society. Um, and, and you add all of that stuff in and, and a lot of our service members have, you know, have kiddos who you've got one, two or three or four kids on a device and trying to figure out how to go to school. So lots of stressors. And oh, by the way, most of us haven't been able to take any leave and go visit family or go on yeah. a vacation. We never got a spring break. We didn't have an opportunity to go anywhere for the summer. Stress, Stress. you know, yeah. so how can we how can we get past this and move past this? We will, like that is who we are as Americans. We will always overcome. But I think again, learning from each other and having grace with each other and, and just connecting is, and, and things like this, being able to just kind of relate to somebody is what helps us overcome. Oh yeah, no, we all need each other. Everybody's important too. Cause I, I know, yeah. uh, you know, suicide is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a huge thing that we're trying to get after as well. So. Uh, we're all important and we all need each other um, yeah. mm -hmm. in that sense. And I love that you do highs and lows at dinner time. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's great. And there's been so much focus, I think, on 2020 being a horrible year. What's one good thing that's happened to you in 2020 besides your your new your new gig? The cheese <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> oh. Super Bowl. So you guys, I feel what? like the fact that we won. <laughs> The Super Bowl was good. Let me tell you, if we never even got to the Super Bowl because of COVID, how horrible would that have been? So, <laughs> so the fact that the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, that we started off strong and then it all kind of got crazy. But, but the other good thing, again, I think is <clears throat> just our, our comfort level and learning how to figure out ways to be able to connect and and still push through the mission sets, right? Our, our, our service members, I'll speak for airmen, have gotten very creative on how we won't let a pandemic stop us from getting mm -hmm. after the things that we have to do. And we figure it out innovative and creative ways to continue going on. I also think that we're at an inflection point where we've also learned that teleworking is actually a thing yeah. and, and that it can work. You know, we can still be effective depending on what job it is, but but that may be a win as well. Excellent. So 
Chief Bass, you are getting an incredible reception on our Facebook page. Just want to take a second to share some of those comments with you. Senior Master Sergeant Sonia Berry says, thank you for, for taking time to chat with us, Chief. Chris Ward says, excited about this chat. Mark Jenkins says, Yeah, I know. That's my twin. Oh, yeah. I, I get, did we lose Leah again? Did we lose her? Um, it's okay. I can pick up some of the comments. So Missy Bearden says high five and she has the high five emoji in there to you guys. Um, said it's a great sense of community in here. Um, yeah, we have, and just so you know, ma'am, this is the highest viewership we've had on chief chat is you. So you are definitely a rock star <laughs> more. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's you. It's you, ma'am. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a C-list celebrity. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you the A-list. Trust me. Yep. So it's that's the um, we the most viewers we we've, we've had on the program have come from you. So thank you. It's been Absolutely. so great having you with us and great engagement. Everybody's excited that you're that you joined us today. Well, I had fun. So where um, so I know that you're involved on social media and where can we go to to follow along and find you? I have a, an official social media site that is Chief Mass Surgeon of the Air Force, Joanne Bass. I do my best to make sure and use that as an information platform where we can just share, communicate. I could talk more about social media. That would take a whole nother <laughs> no, session. <laughs> hey, we could bring you back on though. Come on now, you can be a guest again. Here, here's what I'm gonna tell you. You know, we, we are at, a different stage in 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 society where you know we're we're still trying to figure this thing called social media out you know but but here's what I would offer every leader it's here to stay you know this is this is where our service members are these are where people connect and um, again my goal is that we use it for good is there crazy on social media yes a hundred percent yes. <laughs> You know, my goal is though that at least from a cultural standpoint that that we use social media for good, that we use it to inform that it's a productive tool when the tool of social media or devices begins to control us, then that's not where we need to be. And I think, you know, that's what I try to teach my, my kiddos and, and our family is, hey, if social media or devices are controlling us, that, that, then we need to put a time out. And so if we can gain something from it, then, then that's great. But I will, and it's always risk that you have to balance. I will always choose an opportunity to be able to connect and meet people where they are so that they can hear from me firsthand the things that are going on. It's important for me to hear firsthand the things that are on their minds. It helps me be a better leader and an advocate for them. And, and I'll, I'll take the little bit of crazy that goes with it with hopes that the rest of team 19 and the people who want good will tame out anything that is unhealthy. Uh, like you said, social media is a super powerful tool. Uh, um, and, Cause we find out more information from social media than we do the official chain, like before the official chain. So before oh, yeah. I get that email that comes down from the MASHCOM to my, my second air force to, or my, my, my NAV to my whatever, like social yeah. media's already blasted it and I've already <laughs> and you've got a thousand comments on it already. So, so uh, it, it's like you said, it's here to stay, but uh, we just got to utilize it for uh, the, a good purpose. Yeah. I love it. So, before we say goodbye, man, and I hate to say goodbye because, man, this is an awesome interview. Um, it's like family. It, I talking. know, I know, I, a family. But you keep throwing. I'm, I'm getting my cowboy stuff. I, I didn't bring my cowboy stuff to, to <laughs> trump what you got going on. But I can't even talk about the cowboys right now because, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's on, it's a system of too soon. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share to the airmen and the service members watching today? Yeah. Hey, um, you know, to all the service members and their families. I can't thank y'all enough for, for your sacrifice. I tell people all the time, if you, if you come in to do four years or six years of your enlistment, that's amazing. You know, you're, you're part of the 1% who, who said that they wanna serve their nation. And I would ask you if you're gonna come in for four or six years for your enlistment, then I just want you to kill it. You know, like, like do great things for your service while you're in. And then, you know, learn a trade, do goodness, and then go back on the outside 
and, and, and do great things in your community and, and take the tools that we taught you. For those who serve beyond their first enlistment, thank you, because you don't have to. You know, we, we all serve in an all-volunteer force, and, and we don't have to keep serving. But if we do, we got to bring it every day, and we have to be our very best. Um, that's what I would ask all of them to the family members. You know, I can't stress enough how much we appreciate your sacrifice. We always talk about we recruit the airmen, we recruit the service member, we retain the family. If we will make sure and, and take care of our family members, we're going to be good. And then, of course, to our partners at AFES who take such good care of us. If you will just pass my thanks to all of the employees for everything that they do. Again, when I, when I think about AFES and when I go to, to the BX here at Andrews, you know, the, it's like being home. So, mm -hmm. so I appreciate that, that culture that you guys have had. I appreciate that every service member can go to their base exchange or their post exchange and, and they can go down range and they always see you and you're always there. And I also love this, the, where you're going in the future, where you are really listening to the needs of service members. Absolutely. And so I want to personally thank you um, because for those that don't know, uh, in 2018, uh, is when I went through chief orientation course. So when you make chief, they give you this orientation course, you get a chance to, uh, to get some, some awesome uh, viewpoints from some awesome leaders, uh, professional development, all that good stuff right before we had. A, and I think now it's, it, it was all one, like they, they kind of, so at, when I made it, it was MAGCOM specific. So I was at AFDW at the time. And uh, my, one, well, two of my, my mentors for that particular class, one was, uh, Chief Master of the Air Force Bass, and the other one was the uh, Chief Master of the Air Force of the Space Force, uh, Roger Toberman. So, man, I was like, man, I got, I got two people that were freaking are, are gonna be in somebody's history book, teaching me like right now. So, I was distant for granted. Julian, Leah, you can just blame everything on Chief Bass. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you for for always pouring into people because uh, what I what I noticed because I didn't know you before that actual orientation. But what I can tell is that you love pouring goodness into people. And yeah. I never knew how much I did know about the Air Force until you got up there and you start talking. Because I was like, man, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I was like, man, I got to step my game up. So yeah. uh, like I said, you guys challenged us and you, uh, you, you brought us in the right way. So we definitely appreciate you. And of course, the exchange family, um, thank you. They, they thank you for giving us some, time, some of your time. I know you're super busy. Uh, person Absolutely. you got all these all these uh calls you got today and they got they got a chance to get you at home to do some telework for some calls so we won't hold you that much but it's all thank good. you so much it's been an honor we appreciate you we support you you're doing an awesome job team 19 y'all keep supporting them man y'all are doing an awesome job we we appreciate you for setting this up uh and we hope to see you in, in the future absolutely i cannot wait julie leah great meeting you guys and ko i can't wait to see you soon Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Y'all take care. All right. Such so an you, honor. If, if you can yeah. stay on uh, for a second, I got to get some information from you, but uh, uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Bye, y'all. Right, bye.